It's been two years since the Hypnotist Sappho Saga started, and one year since my last video. And as much as I like to say nothing new has come out since then, there's a reason that this video exists. Let's just say that Sappho is still going about her way throughout the internet, because as soon as my video dropped, more stuff will come out about her to nobody's surprise. Shout out to the Patreon members as always, and if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by checking out the link below or in the corner. With all that being said, let's get right into everything and see what's been happening since last year. After I posted my video on her, she came back rather soon with a long-winded message on her YouTube channel. She talks about how close she was to ending it all, but that she broke down and went inside the hospital, where they transferred her to a psychiatric one. She says she would retract herself from the internet and says that she's too dangerous to be socially online the way she is and that she causes nothing but issues and hurts people with her presence. She says she contacted multiple organizations that help with treatment for people like her and that she's trying to reach out to get herself the help she needs. She ends things off saying for people to let her die off already and that she has serious mental issues and got lost in the sauce basically. This moment of clarity will be short lived as just a few days later she'd make a community post calling out people making videos on her, leaving my name out of the post cause she knows I know what the fuck I'm doing, and to basically sum it all up, gets back on her old shit despite telling people to let her die already. The next day she makes a post telling people what her plans are now that she's back on the internet like nothing ever happened, and then she would drop a follow up with all the ways for people to talk to her and contact her and whatnot, even opening up a discord server along with it. She would then drop a YouTube video with the intent of teaching people how to hide their identity on the internet as much as possible for those who are sick in the head like her and want to be around her. Now her discord server was about what you'd expect, with the whole statement blatantly saying that people with all sorts of paraphiles are in there, but that's all okay she's just building a community of mentally ill freaks like her in it. Saf will live up to her pet of ways and post a video aptly titled this, along with an image of a lolly. A miner would say how they made a new friend in the server, and someone else would guess with them replying in the obvious non-answer implication type way that basically confirms it without outright saying it. Safo would say that she wants to move to Europe one day, and one of the voice chat rooms in the server is called Pawing Off Live, which for the furry fandom means getting their rocks off so to speak, mind you, in a server full of miners. Somebody named Zack would start to hit on her, and after someone asked if they were dating, he would say yeah, and post a date that clearly implies when they turn 18, meaning this person is 14 years old at the moment. After a name change, some more messages will leak of them saying some really nasty shit, as well as another going over their identity and whatnot as they introduce themselves to the server, saying how they love ZR Callow and flirting about Sappho in the process. They would flirt miscellaneously with each other, talking about sleeping in a discord call again, and Sappho saying that dating a 14 year old while herself at the age of 21 isn't illegal, showing the clear lack of sanity she possesses and just how far gone this person is. I would manage to get my hands on a call in a voice chat with the two of them in it, which is downright sick to listen to. You need mm. to literally look at the well, you're, you're just a big dork. You know that? Uh, <laughs> you are my handsome satanic prince. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like you said, since I am satanic mama, that kind of implies something. <laughs> Um. It kind of does, doesn't it? <laughs> um, um, any and every day, yes. That was giggling and kicking my feet for real, for real. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, did you see what I said about my dogs? No, I didn't. My... My lovens. I love you. Man. Aluga. And then there's just me over here offering yeah. to fucking give, give a fucking <laughs> private dance in the Sappho Just Avatar. standing there, like, staring yeah. intensely into the camera. I wanted to join before I go to bed because I wanted to bully you. <laughs> Why? Original is muted and it makes me mad. What? Um, I don't know. I can do Gangnam Style, I guess. <laughs> 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 She'd also get discharged from the military, presumably because of the extreme mental issues she has. 
Sappho would come back to Twitter soon after it was bought by Elon Musk and proceeded to try and build her following on there as well. Truth be told, it wasn't really anything of importance to be honest, though her Discord server would end up getting nuked soon after making her account, so good on that. She would make a post about how she's in love with a 14 year old cause she's a sick freak, and I would catch a wind of it and make my own post after seeing it. Safa would then block me, start to cope on her timeline saying that I sent people to harass a 14 year old, and then try to get her zoo file friends to report my Twitter page cause she was but her I called her out on her shit. Along with this would be a telegram channel she made, one that was conveniently wiped on November 4th because I remember seeing her telling people to report my Twitter in there as well, but I never grabbed a screenshot. Some interesting things would be said in the chat, like how Sappho wants to drop her Sappho name but still stay around under her Valerie name while running her servers, and how she's going to church when we all know it's just a ploy to make people think she's bettering herself. She would even end up showing a tattoo she has on her wrist, showing that it's the Zeta Greek symbol, the one that zoo files like to represent themselves with, right on her left wrist. She talks about how dating a 14 year old as an adult isn't illegal because it's just a loving and caring relationship and gives people a relative idea how much older she is, which is about the 21 year age mark we've been talking about. She goes on to say she wants to marry them and how they're the most important person in her life and I pretty much threw up in my mouth after this because this was exactly the kind of shit she was saying to Kylo when we went over that in my last video. Speaking of Kylo, Zack said he used to be friends with them at one point in time, and then a familiar face joins the chat and talks around for a bit, all nonchalant like it's normal to talk to a known predator like this, seemingly taking solace in her and Sappho trying to spin a narrative to get on his good side in real time. I would join the chat to talk shit and try to bait a response for content, and in doing so Sappho would wipe everything, meaning whatever the hell was being talked about earlier must have been some pretty weird stuff. She also started another Mastodon server, but it was basically a carbon copy of Twitter just on another platform, so nothing new was going on there at all. Things would take a turn however, as just as soon as she came back into the limelight and was finally settling in, she would private herself on Twitter and post a message in her Telegram chat, Mastodon server, and YouTube community tab all saying the same thing about how she's gonna dip out again from the internet. She says she only rejoined to piss people off now that she has more important things to worry about, like attending church and reading the bible and whatnot, and that she's praying for every single person blah 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 nobody's falling for that shit. This was a shock because she was really going at it on Twitter during this time, posting stuff like this and pretty much egging people on along with the church stuff, so to suddenly 180 things was very strange. Well, before she dropped Twitter, she changed her name to Connor for a bit, and I happened to see this in real time. The name Connor was a completely new name that I hadn't seen yet, so I decided to dig around the internet and see what this name would conjure up, and I found some pretty interesting stuff. Two notable images would be leaked, the first being an uncensored image of Sappho in her military uniform, and another of her old Snapchat account, aptly named Connor. That Snapchat account would lead to an Instagram account, then a Twitch account, and then eventually to another alternate Twitter account. The Twitter ain't nothing special, but some notable posts will be made like the one on screen, talking about age gaps and whatnot as far back as two years ago, showing how mentally stunted this person is. All three of the social media accounts will get deleted shortly after, meaning that people were on her tail and Sappho knew it, and so she began to try to cover her tracks up. We still have our leaked photo to go through, as people can see part of her birth last name in there ending in Aundi, and so the digging would commence. Some people were able to find an email account associated with Sappho, and plugging this email into Have I Been Pwned shows it was used in Animal Jam, a game that Sappho would play a lot as seen in my last video. Plugging this into Epios gives us the name Connor Roundy, and guess what? That last name fits perfectly onto Sappho's uniform. After over a year of digging around on the internet, people were finally able to attach a name to this scumbag, and her post leaving the internet suddenly became very clear. She wasn't leaving on her own terms to find God or whatever, she finally got caught and knew she had to dip out before things started to bleed into her real family life one way or another. It gets funnier though, as the very day I was researching and writing up this script, the person of the hour would message me on telegram herself trying to somehow shift things onto ZR Callow and apologize for the stuff back in her chat. I wasn't falling for any of that shit, and she would tell me she's estranged from her family, and then go on about how she's dating the 14 year old and would wait any amount of time for them. I would call her scum and delusional, and she would say that love happens unexpectedly blah 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 trying to justify dating a 14 year old. She says she's going to church and might come back to the limelight as a preacher one day. I talk more shit to her and her delusions. And then she would try to flirt with me for some reason to no avail, because unlike the children she talks to, I'm an adult who can see past these poor attempts at manipulation and see her for who she truly is. She's really fucking weird, sending me cute cat gifts to try and conversate or whatever with me, when all she's doing is giving me content to use for this video. 
She also nuked the chat despite saying she wouldn't, so good thing I saved the logs in time. Despite saying how she's gonna dip from the internet, Sappho would end up on a live stream where people were basically just talking shit to ZR Callow after that debacle went down, and nothing important really happened other than her confirming she's known Callow since way back in that Xanadu chat I mentioned, which I previously had been told but never had any evidence till now. Didn't you mention that you were in alt-right furry chats with Zerkawa all the way back oh. to oh, yeah. 2018? I was, uh, mm. I was in Xanadu, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I was in Xanadu. She's currently back on Twitter trying to crusade against the channel owner Casafox now, but it's so boring it's not even worth going over. She's just mad people don't treat her nicely. Some more photos of Sappho come out during this time period, and someone named Lang Gilbert will post a handful of audio clips from when Sappho used to hang around the Xanadu chat from back in the day. Oh, you know it. I'm based. Red pilled and pink pilled. Take the pink pill, big up. <coughs> mm. That's the sound of me choking on your daddy. Someone will leak her entire Matrix server logs for people to dig through, with some highlights including a miner being seen in the NSFW general chat. A 13-year-old zoophile miner joining the server. Someone asking if Lolly is allowed. A mod implying they'll make a channel for IRL zoo content. Another mod straight up saying that they'll do bedtime stories for the miners in the server. Sappho planning to sell audio recordings of herself. Her trying to leak the IP address of a troll that joined the server. And Sappho trying to stop any talks of people telling their ages in the NSFW chat because she knows that people see her grooming more miners and she doesn't want that to be used against her. Sappho would actually show up on her QB farms thread again after finding out about this leak trying to epically own the users and argue with them about a bunch of stuff nobody cares about because everyone knows she's a manipulative liar, alongside making a new website called fuckthefeds.pro. The site's front page has a gif of a hamster and some music playing, but when scrolling down it actually consists of a document she made in order to help people like herself avoid the law by teaching them how to cover their tracks online. Users would reply and immediately BTFO her as expected. She would continue to whine and argue with people on the site to no avail. So much in fact that the owner of Kiwi Farms would jump into the mess himself after catching wind of it. Sappho starts to argue with him about how there's nothing illegal going on in her server or whatever, before going silent on everyone once again. People will find more photos of her from back in high school, and for any doubters if it was her or not, she would confirm so herself later that day on Twitter. On the same day, she would start up a new YouTube channel called Going Brightly, which was dedicated to posting cybersecurity-esque content. Of course, this was just a front so that she could teach her fellow sick in the head zoophile fucks how to hide their illegal activities as much as possible were the police to ever intervene. Sappho orbiters would comment down below on the video as expected, and she would continue to egg on Kiwi Farms and any other people watching her every move in the process. She would drop some more videos containing more miscellaneous cybersecurity stuff, and someone would find a Roblox account going by her name during this time, but other than that, it was the typical fare from her. Sappho also has this obsession with constantly trying to control the narrative and mock people for not catching her, when people have plenty of face pics and got her full name Connor Roundy and such, so this was just more coping coming from her end. She would continue to cope on the Twitter timeline like always, and continue to poke at Kiwi Farm some more to piss them off in expected fashion. She would upload three more videos to the channel that are archived, which are basically more cybersecurity related stuff in her epic quest to teach all her friends how to hide on the internet, alongside some more general molding. Hello everybody, and welcome to the Glowing Brightly channel, where I make the feds seethe and the man-children cry that I have my own opinions. Hello everybody, and welcome to the Glowing Brightly channel, where I make the feds seethe and the man-children cry by giving you the security advice that you deserve. All this antagonizing would piss off the QE Farms users, so they did what they do best and managed to find a few new things about her. They noticed in an old tweet she mentioned the type of church she was going to, and when checking out the area around her, they found the St. Luke's Episcopal Church online worship livestream on Facebook. But wait a minute, who's that in the background? Is that who I think it is? There's no possible way, right? Holy shit, it's Connor Roundy in the flesh, and it seems they've gained a couple pounds since leaving the Air Force. The stress of all these people hunting them down online must be killing them. The site's users would start to take the absolute piss out of her after seeing her current state, and she would try to control the narrative some more on Twitter, even calling other people lard asses in the process, but this would of course be to no avail. People now had a modern face to this monster, and the news of this new, up-to-date look started to spread around like wildfire as one of the most prolific zoophile pedophiles in recent internet memory got caught some more. Her orbiters would continue to comment on her YouTube videos, Sappho would say she wants to start a group home with other sick people like herself, and talk about her and her paraphile community as some sort of weird dysfunctional family or whatever in another state of delusion. She'd also post a picture alongside that with some long-winded message about how a bunch of people are hunting her down but she's still standing and blah 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 yada yada yada. Just a lot of delusion and a lot of coping mixed into one giant mess of a post. 
She would then try to pull off this new tactic to remind people she's human just like everyone else reading the post. Going on this long tangent about how she's just a regular person who made some mistakes in life and that it's not her job to lead people or anything like that. Telling people to stop worshipping her and that she doesn't want a cult around her. There's also this TikTok video posted on December 13th, 2022 of someone saying they were dating hypnotist Sappho, but I couldn't find anything concrete, so take it however you will. Are you actually dating Sappho? I don't think my Steam account will be banned for just I am. Doing it, are you, but you're yeah, a furry though, right? Keep monkeying. I am. Keep doing it. Let it out. I was, I was asking you are. And yet, we yeah. just can't find common ground and be accepting, you know, one of the most accepting communities ever turns its back on just one. random people. Sappho will get butthurt that people are making fun of her for being fat and will post on Twitter trying to do the typical deflection tactic, sending two new photos of themselves in the process. Despite doing the classic technique of the upper camera angle to seem less fat, this is to no avail as people continue to make fun of her, and she would still try to play it off on Twitter while secretly seething and molding on the inside. She would keep antagonizing Kiwi Farms some more on Twitter, and would eventually show back up because she can't handle being called fat, projecting in a response to them and trying to say they're just butthurt people, going on about how she's going to get her bachelor's in cybersecurity soon and is going to try to get her master's while definitely not molding at the people trying to get justice for her actions. She would continue to argue with the users on the site about how she's an activist putting herself in the crosshairs but that it won't hurt her, and pretty much just getting delusional once more with everyone realizing this is another meltdown in real time. Sappho would jump scare some people on Twitter later on that day, and then would go on to show a screenshot of her arguing with the users on the site and doing the typical antagonization technique. For any people still doubting if it was her or not, she would accidentally show the bottom corner of the post showing off the edit function, giving people hard confirmation she's been the one running the the bitch herself persona going on. She would continue to brag about grooming more children on VR chat on Twitter, antagonize Kiwi Farms users some more and call them losers and whatever, and then go on to show off a handful of comments that she gets on Twitter as some sort of thank you to all the other sick people like her. She would join back Kiwi Farms once again to argue and epically own them, stating how she's working so hard to do something with their life and all they do is make fun of her as she does this, going on to just say a bunch of pointless insults as the users themselves aren't even amused anymore at this point, before dipping out once again after not getting the usual antagonistic responses from them. That would be short lived as she would proceed to come back the very next day, doing the usual antagonism because she's terminally online and seems to just need to constantly remind people that she's still alive and not in jail yet. Someone would mention her beliefs in a reply, and she would bring up the age of consent and ignore the animal point because that's usually how manipulative people go about when arguing with others, and go on to continue to ignore points and argue because that's all she really does know. Sappho go on to claim that she got swatted by trolls on Kiwi Farms and that just so happened to happen during an interview so it was recorded. She would continue to run with this narrative and try to make herself out to be a victim, and then head back to Kiwi Farms showing off a news article talking about it as such, with pictures of the police force in question lined up outside her place as proof to her claims. That message also includes mentions of YouTuber Brandon FM and that he'll be the one releasing the interview in a few weeks from that day, before of course going on to argue with the Key Farms users once again instead of trying to hide from those who are clearly going full throttle against her. Sappho starts to argue about swatting and insulting people some more like usual, posts an out of context tasteless joke as an epic own, in which the user themselves will join in the thread and clarify his wishes towards her for good measure. The drop Key Farms campaign going on during this time would also retweet Sappho's claims of her being swatted by them as well, which is pretty ironic given the person they're trying to defend. Sappho would also drop some audio from when she was swatted for any people interested. Adults are more ready for a relationship than a child <laughs> because their brains can be more hey, less, um, I guess, right? I have to go for just a minute, but I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Do you always keep your shotgun out like that? Uh, Is it because yeah. you're, like, you're worried about stuff, or...? A little bit. Yeah. yeah, I'm not worried about you guys. Okay. She would make a tweet about talking to her church and then being shaken about whatever was said and that she's now going back to being a Satanist. It's worth pointing out she changed the original post as well, but the message is pretty clear for the people keeping up with her. She would then say she's making changes in her life or something before talking about taking her pills for the day to nobody's surprise. She would get back to Kiwi Farms and argue with those pointing out the strange coincidence that of all moments of her life, she got swatted when it was with the 100k plus sub YouTuber during an interview, and then go on to just straight up mauled with the users because that's all she ever does whenever she joins the site. However, she would change her tune come the start of the new year, saying how she knows she's messed up in the head and on multiple kinds of medications to try to help keep her sane, even saying she's probably on a list somewhere due to all her actions throughout her time on the internet. People would say that this is all just bait from her and her trying a new tactic while naming all the awful things that she's done and is currently doing, telling her to dip from the internet entirely and find adults to hang around with alongside more similar statements. 
Others would start to try and convince her to turn herself into the police and take accountability for all the heinous things that she's done on the internet. And some would even say she's being straight up disingenuous again as she has a history of acting this way before getting back on her shit. This would be proven true once again as her meds wore off and she would get right back to it, arguing with the users again for not being sympathetic to her when they had plenty of reasons not to, showing everyone that this moment of clarity was just that, a momentary glimpse into the deep recesses of her mind that rarely comes out. She would continue to argue with the people on the site about them being mean or whatever to her to no avail, and start to bring up the ages of people having kids together as some sort of epic own during this entire event. Safa will continue to try and bait sympathy from the users while also still talking down upon them with some photoshop note message, going to argue thinking that the reason the users don't believe her is because they can't understand their mentally ill losers in her own words, when in reality it's because she's quite possibly one of the most mentally ill and untrustworthy people on the planet. She would continue to argue with the users about tech qualifications and whatnot, sending her last few messages pissing them off some more on the site and leaving it for the time being after epically owning everyone on the thread. However, that very day she would go on to say that after talking with someone she is now looking to change her ways, with the users doubting she'll do it for obvious reasons. This image would come out of her writing down a log of her apparently getting attacked when she was at a mental institution around this time as well. Safo would go on to delete her Twitter account, remove all her YouTube videos from the site, so it seems she might have actually been serious about this attempt to fix herself, right? Well, people will find a Discord account naming themselves as Sappho and a Twitter account with the same profile pic talking to Elite Shark in July 2022, another zoo file as seen in my ZR Kalo video, so it seemed this might have been yet another one of her many alt accounts, with the account in question being gone from the site now. Someone would also see that one of her orbiters pretending to be her would say they met her in VR chat on January 23rd, 2023 alongside a picture, so it seems that she might have been back on her shit after dipping from the public internet. Someone will find some more miscellaneous info about her fandom lols alias, such as her Instagram account having a picture of her when she was younger and another picture of them as a child, her game builder account introducing herself as such to all the other members on the site, her Snapchat accounts under the relevant names, and even her Quora and Google reviews she posted at one point in time about the church she used to go to. Brandon FM will release his video about Sappho on January 27th, 2023, a 40 minute cut up interview alongside the expected edits throughout. Given the entire interview is behind a paywall, listening to what the video shows itself doesn't really add anything new to the table as it's rather one-sided and more of Sappho lying through her teeth, though it does include the entire audio of the swatting incident. I want to be super intrusive, you've been awesome, by the way. You just walk through and make sure there's no dead body, is that okay? <laughs> yeah, no. Yes, we just wanna, we just wanna make sure. We're not, like I said, we're not trying to be intrusive, but the, the, the phone call that we received was very concerning, so. So just your closet real quick and we'll get out of your hair. There's even one part where Brandon asked Safa what her intentions are with the Fuck the Fed site, in which she would lie to his face and not say her actual intentions, saying that she was genuinely trying to provide cybersecurity advice to people when we all know that's not true. So what is the intentions of this website? Why this website? There's a few, like a few different layers to it. One is that, you know, fuck the feds.pro, just the domain itself, you know, it, it indicates something specific and it's, um, you know, it, at the same time, it makes people angry that I'm giving security advice on a website called fuck the feds.pro. <laughs> But the other layer and the other part of it is that I genuinely want to provide cybersecurity advice to uh, anybody who might be targeted by like vigilantes or, um, you know, unjustly went after by uh, whatever agency. It's not, you know, this nefarious thing to show people how to uh, how to break the law and not get caught or anything. <laughs> the video will end off with Brandon playing an audio message that she sent him after the interview, mainly of her trying to garner any kind of sympathy that she can from his viewers, knowing that it's her last attempt at trying to convince people that she's changing. Hey everyone, it's Valerie slash Sappho coming at you again, this time with a final message. I've been spending time the past week with my spiritual guides and meditating on everything that's happened up until this point in my life. I wanted to say it how it is. I want to warn the people that are finding themselves in the same position that I was in or that are going in the same direction that I was going. Anybody who was inspired by what I did or not. I hope that you listen to the message that I have because it's important. I'm a lost and spiritually sick individual. 
I betrayed my original purpose to do no harm and developed a twisted worldview where I believed reprehensible acts were in fact love or could ever be love. To be involved in the communities that I was a part of was like willingly walking into a den of wolves with smiley faces on. Everyone is out to get each other and you're not going to be special in this regard. I'm on a spiritual journey to cleanse myself of this terrible sickness. Something more dangerous than any other thing I have experienced in my life. But it's not too late for me. And it's also not too late for you to live a normal life. If you still trust or believe me, and even if you don't, please escape this den of wolves before it consumes and destroys you. Escape before someone with bad intentions traps you, uses you, or worse. I've seen it all, and it always ends the same, terribly. So please take my advice and please leave these communities. I'm focusing on other things now and have the people around me that I've needed for a long time. Healing isn't an easy process, but I really do want to change. So I'm on a strict schedule now and I'm fundamentally changing parts of my life. I'm getting better now because I've finally woken up and I'm being treated with compassion by people that actually care. So I guess that it's goodbye now, for real this time. I'll be okay and I'm sorry for letting everybody down. Don't worry too much about me, I'll be fine. Peace out. After the video drop, people find out that Safa had been posted on QE Farms again under this new account Beatzard after comparing the redacted info alongside a leaked DM of Safa talking about the same exact stuff on Discord around the same time. It would also come out that Coyote Lovely was actually flirting with Safa the whole time and there's an entire arc about that, but that's a whole story in of itself that I'll eventually get to covering one day. Safa would be found under a new Telegram account still stalking her QE Farms thread. And it would turn out this is from one of the Arcalos telegram chats, with the zoo file pedo themselves showing up to give their own take on what was going on. She would then try to get people to pity her for being so screwed up in the head to the only freaks willing to keep her around now that she has virtually nobody to go to. There would also be some new audio clips leaked from the chat to show just how comfortable she is hanging around those freaks. There you go, little one. You can relax and sit down into my lap. Just get nice and comfortable. Resting up against my chest fluffies. I'll hold you and kiss you and play with your hair. Hmm. And just make you all nice and warm. And when you're all nice and relaxed and comfortable against me, I'll have my way with you. <laughs> Safo tried to expose someone else in the Kiwi Farms thread, but given they aren't into children and animals, nobody gave a shit and continued to make fun of her. With her going on to DM the guy in question during yet another one of her antagonistic rage moments on the website. She would even take this to Twitter DMs, messaging the guy in question some more stuff as he just kept leaking each and everything she sent his way in expected fashion. Someone would even try to spam call the guy in question, and given that Safo had been going after them on Kiwi Farms and Twitter, it's within reality this might have been her once again. Some random dude named Pip would even start to date Safa as well during this time period. And even though someone messaged him and he said he wasn't a minor, dating a zoophile pedo is pretty fucking weird if you ask me. Safa would make a miscellaneous post making fun of the users on the site, and that same exact clown picture would be seen on her Twitter account confirming it more to be her again. She would also start up a new telegram channel called Dip and try to brand herself as a hippie now. And of course, some of the members include a zoophile and a minor to the surprise of nobody. On March 15th, she would say she doesn't want to involve herself with any of those communities anymore despite this being yet another lie. Still trying to run with this new narrative that she's just another random internet hippie now given by her Twitter account's overall aesthetic. 
she would log back into her the bitch herself account and give people a taste of her own medicine again. Mainly just raging and getting mad people are still watching and making fun of her for being a stain on humanity. Another minor would be found in her telegram channel right after this, and she would take her raging to people's DMs once more, literally doing nothing but trying to argue with them despite nobody willing to humor her anymore as it's been years of this type of stuff by this point. Saf would continue to make miscellaneous posts on Twitter about how her life is changing for the better and whatnot, saying how she meditates now and probably takes a bunch of drugs to keep her from going schizo anymore on the internet. She would make an account to cite Noster, and would continue to poke at Kiwi Farms again about how they're just talking about her for no reason according to her viewpoint. She would then nuke all her tweets on her account and only start to retweet stuff, and would say in her telegram chat that she apparently detransitioned back to being a male as well. She would then get back to antagonizing people on Twitter, saying how she puts herself above others in life and that she's winning as they don't drag her down or nothing, going on to say she's so much better than the Kiwi Farms people that keep making fun of her and how she has a new partner living at her own place and all that kind of stuff. Despite all this, Sappho continued to lurk her Kiwi Farms thread and talk trash about them on Twitter, continuing to insult them even though she says she definitely doesn't care and definitely isn't mad or anything, showing that even though she says she's moving on, she can't help but watch what everyone says about her and try to epically own anybody that talks bad about her. She would say that all she wants in life is to live off the grid on a small farm all alone and away from society, before going on a nuke her Twitter again and rebrand herself once more, this time under a more basic feminine male persona. She would continue to be active on her Telegram channel talking about random stuff with the users, and despite supposedly dropping the Sappho persona, she can't help but get herself involved in the situation whenever and wherever her name is dropped on the internet. Sappho started to make a bunch of posts about general American politics and what living in America is like socially and stuff like that in a much more normal sounding tone than her usual rants. People find her supposed new Discord account under the name Signfox1234 in the Zooey.pub Discord server, a server dedicated to zoo files being freaks like usual. I decided to look further into this using the screenshot as my basis, and the same exact conversation was found within the server confirming it to be from there. If you notice, the account is different now, so I decided to go through each and every post they made to get a better understanding if this is her or not. The messages are very singular and basic which is not typical of Sappho to do, and they would even say they were mentioned on Kiwi Farms during the same time period. Another user would ask them why they did this whole fake Sappho charade and start to argue with them, and I soon realized it was yet another orbiter just trying to get attention to themselves off her name. This has become a very common occurrence in those sick zoo communities, but at least we can put this to rest and see it was just another random sick individual in this world. A picture leaked out of her wearing a gas mask on August 5th, and another of her character modeled in a new look on August 24th. Her Twitter account seems to be gone once again, and her Telegram channel is now an entry channel where people need to be approved before they're added to the real one. Her account on the app is right here with this new image for everyone to see, and she even happened to change the profile picture literally the very minute after I took the last screenshot, so it's apparent that she's still around on the internet, just a lot more secretive about it. The Hypnotist Sappho saga has been one hell of a journey so far. What started off two years ago as some random person coming out as a zoophile turned into one of the deepest rabbit holes on the mainstream internet. You saw last year just how insane she is trying to date young teenagers and such, and even this year's iteration of the subject ended up being just as insane. She has this constant need to argue at people and epically own them whenever her name is brought up, and given how constantly she keeps going to Kiwi Farms, I'm willing to bet she'll eventually crack again and get right back to it just like clockwork. Safa has recently gotten a lot quieter than usual within the past 3 or so months, showing us that maybe that plethora of drugs she's supposedly on are finally doing something positive for once. With that being said, she still hangs around minors and other zoo files in her telegram channel because she just can't help it. She can't detach herself from the internet because it's all she has. She has no family, no friends, nothing. Just other people similar to herself trying to justify their sick desires and attractions in a world that hates their very existence. I can't even pity her because she's a very manipulative individual, and as you've seen, she was still up to those games within this past year and probably still is, only on a much more low-key scale now. Honestly, by the way it looks, until people see her in jail, it doesn't look like they'll ever forget about her and her time on the internet. Only time will tell what happens next, but given how things have gone so far, we might get some more to this story sooner than later.